grateful for the opportunity to be here today and talk about MS and multiple sclerosis. And I'm going to talk about smoking as a risk factor for MS. And I will also present findings regarding smoking after MS onset. So first, just very briefly, um, smoking affects the immune system through several mechanisms and uh, have been associated with increased risk of a number of autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. Both innate and cell-mediated immunity is affected. And smoking induces a systemic inflammation and also local inflammatory response in the lungs. The risk of infection is increased. Um, and tobacco smoke contains uh, a number of chemicals that induce oxidative stress that have been found to directly damage neural tissue. And recently it's also been found that smoking leads to epigenetic modifications. So most of these changes, including at least some of the epigenetic changes, are reversible after smoking cessation. <coughs> A large number of studies have uh, investigated the association between smoking and MS risk, and almost all of them have found that smoking increases the risk of, of uh, the disease. <coughs> the association was first confirmed in the Nurses Health Study, which is a prospective cohort study of US women. In 2007, uh, a pooled analysis of six studies showed that, the, <coughs> showed that smoking increased the risk of MS with an odds ratio of approximately 1.5. And this estimate was later verified in an updated meta-analysis that was published a few years later. <coughs> And after that, uh, evidence for an association between smoking and MS risk has been rapidly increasing and has enabled more advanced meta-analysis. And the most recent meta-analysis have concluded that um, the increased risk of, of uh, MS associated with smoking is greater among men than among women and also more pronounced among current smokers than among past smokers. And there is a dose-response relationship between the accumulated dosing and uh, the accumulated dose of smoking and increased uh, MS risk. We have used two studies at the Karolinska Institute to study the impact of smoking on MS risk. These studies are population-based case control studies. Uh, AIMS started in 2007 and is still ongoing. And in this study, uh, incident cases of MS are recruited from 42 hospitals throughout Sweden, including all university hospitals. And for each case, uh, two controls are selected from the population register, from the national population register. And in the other study, uh, GEMS, uh, prevalent cases of MS were identified from the Swedish MS registry in 2009. All these, all cases in both studies fulfilled the McDonald criteria. And uh, in both studies, all the participants filled out a questionnaire on uh, smoking, on both smoking habits and other lifestyle habits and uh, different uh, environmental exposures. And they were also asked to provide a blood sample for genetic analysis. And when we studied the impact of smoking, we um, calculated the index year and that is the year in which the cases had the first symptoms of disease, and then the corresponding controls were given the same index year 
So smoking habits were only considered before the index year. And when we combine these studies, we have uh, approximately 9,000 cases and more than 11,000 controls. And that has given us the opportunity to study this association in more detail. And these points are aspects of the association and uh, I'm going to present them um, point by point. So those who have uh, ever smoked have an increased risk of MS with about 50% compared to those who have never smoked. Current smokers were those who had, were those who smoked at the time of the index year and past smokers for those who had stopped smoking at the, at the index year. So as we saw from the meta-analysis, current smoking has a greater impact on disease risk than past smoking. And when we studied the accumulated dose of smoking, we calculated the number of pack years each participant had smoked. One pack year is the same as smoking 20 cigarettes daily for one year. So here the reference group is the never smokers, and then the smokers were categorized based on number of pack years. And we can see that there is a dose response relationship, uh, the risk of the disease increases with increasing accumulated dose of smoking. And among those who smoked more than 15 packages, they almost have a doubled risk of, of developing MS. And when this analysis is stratified by gender, we see that uh, there is a trend among both uh, men and women, uh, but that the influence of smoking is much more pronounced among men. And uh, we don't yet know why, but um, we know that smoking uh, influences hormonal levels and that might at least contribute to explain the, the findings. And then we separately examined the duration and intensity of smoking to see which of them contributed the most. Uh, so again, the reference group is the never smokers, and the smokers were categorized based on duration of smoking, a number of years, and uh, by intensity of smoking. And both duration and intensity of smoking independently increased the risk of MS. The intensity of smoking seemed to be more important during the first decade of smoking. For those who had smoked less than 10 years, uh, there was a dose-response relationship. The, the risk of disease increased with increasing intensity of smoking. But then after, after a decade of smoking, then duration of smoking was more important. And we can see from the table that even smoking less than five cigarettes per day um, during a longer period of time uh, doubles the risk of, of MS. And we can also see that smoking more than 15 years doubles the risk of the disease, uh, and that is uh, re regardless of the intensity of smoking. There are several risk factors for MS that seem to contribute to disease um, only if the exposure takes place during a specific age period. For example, obesity at young age increases MS risk, while obesity later in life has no influence. So in order to, to study whether, whether the timing of smoking influenced the association, we, we divided the smokers into groups based on when they had started smoking, and we found no difference between the groups. So in this aspect, smoking seemed to differ between or from, from many of the other risk factors for MS, because smoking increases MS risk regardless of when the exposure takes place. 
And there were a few participants here that had started smoking after the age of 25, but even in this group, uh, the risk of MS was increased with about 60% among current smokers. Uh, so we know that current smoking has a greater impact in disease risk than past smoking, but we wanted to see more exactly what happens after stopping smoking. So never smokers uh, are the reference group and uh, the smokers were, were divided into current smokers and past smokers. And the past smokers were further categorized based on the duration since stopping smoking. And we can see here that the increased risk associated with MS slowly decreases after stopping smoking. And a decade after smoking cessation, the risk of MS seems to be back to baseline and that is regardless of the accumulated dose of smoking. <laughs> we have also studied the potential interactions between uh, smoking and MS risk genes than with regard to MS risk. <laughs> and interaction on the additive scale occurs when the combined effect of two factors, here we have a factor A and we have factor B, and additive interaction occurs when the combined effect of these factors differs from the sum of the individual effects of each factor. And if the factors are causally related to MS risk, then an interaction indicates that the factors are involved in the same mechanistic pathway. We calculated the attributable proportion due to interaction to estimate the interaction. And an AP is the proportion of the incidence among the double exposed that are due to the interaction. So an AP that is greater than zero indicates interaction. And these are the factors that we included in the interaction analysis. We excluded the past smokers because the influence of past smoking differs depending on uh, the time since uh, stopping smoking. And the genetic factors were ATLA, DRB115, which is the most uh, important genetic risk factor for MS. And the other genetic factor is HLA A2. And because this gene has been associated with a decreased risk of developing MS, absence of HLA2 is considered the risk factor here. So the participants um, were categorized based on smoking habits and genotype. And the reference group is the never smokers with none of the genetic risk factors. And among the smokers, we can see that absence of HLA2 increases the risk of MS with approximately 80%. DRB115 gives a fourfold increased risk, while the combination of the genetic factors uh, gives an odds ratio of 6.2. So there is an interaction between the genetic factors that is independent of smoking with an AP of um, 0 0.2. And that means that 20% of the cases with both genetic factors uh, are attributable to, to the interaction between them. Smoking with none of the genetic factors uh, doubled the risk of the disease. Uh, and there were also interactions between each of the genetic factor and smoking. And among those who had all three risk factors, uh, there was a three-way interaction with an AP of uh, 0.5. This figure just illustrates the data from the table. And it shows the separate effect of each 
of the genetic factors and the combination of them um, among smokers and uh, uh, never smokers. And when this analysis is stratified by gender, we see that the genetic contribution to disease is very similar among men and women, uh, but that the interaction between smoking and genotype is much more pronounced among men. And um, I would also just like to mention here that both passive smoking and organic solvents increase MS risk in a dose response manner. And they both interact with the same MS risk genes to increase MS risk. And this has led us to a theory that um, the mechanisms behind uh, the influence of smoking and other airway exposures may involve the lung. Uh, so this picture just illustrates, which is actually one of the theories trying to explain the interaction. But smoking contains chemicals that induce oxidative stress and a local inflammatory response in the lungs. And the theory is that it's a lung inflammation that drives the increased risk of MS. The inflammation induces post-translational modifications of proteins in the lungs. And hypothetically, if these modified peptides are cross-reactive with CNS antigens, uh, this could lead to a CNS-directed autoimmune response. And in experimental studies, it's also been shown that, that autoreactive cells are present in the lungs, and these cells can become activated after local stimulation of the lungs. And when they are activated, they also, they, they also develop the ability to migrate to the brain. And the interaction with the DRB115 uh, may be explained by the fact that the different class two molecules have different preferences in peptide binding. So specific recognition of the altered self peptides could lead to different organ specific inflammatory diseases than depending on the structure of the class two molecules. So smoking associated uh, inflammation in the lungs may activate T cells uh, that uh, could lead to MS and then especially among those with a genetic susceptibility to the disease. And then some words about the prevention or rather why prevention is important. We've calculated uh, the attributable proportion of cases due to smoking and passive smoking. And uh, about 20% of the cases are attributable to smoke exposure. And that means that 20%, uh, well, if, if smoking is a cultural factor for MS, it means that 20% of the incidence, MS incidence, could be prevented just if, if smoking just disappeared. <laughs> um, we've also seen that, that uh, the increased risk uh, associated with smoking slowly decreases after, after stopping smoking, and there's also no interaction between, between uh, for smoking and MS risk genes. So preventing measures could make a difference. And then we have smoking after MS onset. We'll know that um, a large proportion of the patients smoke uh, at the time of, of the disease onset. And several studies have looked at um, patients with the clinically isolated syndrome 
and whether smoking increases the risk of, of conversion into clinically definite MS. Uh, and the results have been a bit inconclusive. Two of the studies uh, that found no association used cocaine levels uh, as a measure of smoking. And this may have affected the, the results because cocaine is a nicotine metabolite and cocaine levels are also higher among those who use smokeless tobacco and there is no association between smokeless tobacco and MS risk. So it's possible that uh, a number of the patients here may have been misclassified. But regarding smoking and disease progression, um, different studies have had a different outcome measures, but almost all studies show that continued smoking after MS onset has a negative impact on disease progression. Uh, there is an increased risk of coercion into secondary progressive disease and an increased risk of reaching disability landmarks such as EDSS4 and EDSS6. And the last study uh, showed that for each additional year of smoking after MS onset, the time to secondary progressive disease is reduced by about 5%. Uh, three studies have uh, investigated the effect of smoking cessation after MS onset. And all these studies found that stopping smoking after onset was associated with a slower progression of the disease. Um, and uh, it has also been found that the effect of, of smoking cessation is better if it occurs early after MS onset. Smoking may also increase the risk of um, uh, developing neutralizing antibodies to biological drugs. We've used, uh, we have two studies from GEMS uh, where we found that current smoking, but not fast smoking, uh, increases the risk of developing neutralizing antibodies. Uh, and there is also an increased risk uh, of this with increasing intensity of smoking. The most recent study did not find uh, a significant uh, association, uh, but I think this study also used cocaine levels as a measure of uh, smoking. So the conclusions are that smoking um, increases MS risk in a dose-dependent manner, and the increased risk slowly decreases after stopping smoking. Uh, smoking uh, has a negative impact on the disease risk regardless of when the exposure takes place. And the impact of smoking is greater among those who have um, a genetic susceptibility to the disease. <coughs> smoking after MS onset is associated with a faster disease progression and a more severe disease. And there is also a risk that the smoking affects treatment outcomes uh, in a negative way by increasing the risk of uh, developing neutralizing <coughs> antibodies to biological drugs. And, and with this background, we should recommend patients to stop smoking and also help them to find strategies for it. And I would also like to acknowledge uh, those in the AIMS and the, the GIMS study groups. And thank you.